Hey guys, welcome to Coding and Flow. In this tutorial, we will learn how to run an intent service in Android. But before you watch this video, make sure to watch my foreground service tutorial first, because there I explain some stuff that is necessary to understand this video. In the foreground service tutorial, you learn how normal services work. And there I also explain the Android Oreo background execution limits, which play a role for intent services as well. You can find the foreground service tutorial when you click on the little eye in the top right corner. So make sure to watch it first and then come back to this video. Okay, so what is an intent service? The intent service is just a subclass of the normal service, with the difference that it executes all the incoming work on the background thread, whereas a normal service runs on the main thread. So it's just a convenience class that makes threading in services easier. It handles all the incoming work sequentially, one after another, and when it's finished executing all the work, it automatically stops itself. And since intent services are just services, the same Android Oreo background execution limits apply. Which means that we can't run it as a normal background service, because the system will either kill it or throw an exception. And the recommended alternative is to use the job intent service instead. And the job intent service works like this, on API level 25 and lower, it just starts a normal background intent service, and on Android Oreo onwards, it uses the job scheduler instead. I have a tutorial on job scheduler as well, which you can also find in the top right corner, but you don't have to watch this one. And in almost all cases, you should now use the job intent service. And I will make a separate tutorial on the job intent service very soon, and when it's done, you can also find it in the top right corner. But in this video, we will take a different approach. Here we will also run our intent service as a normal background service on API level 25 and lower, but on Oreo onwards we will run a foreground service instead, just like in the foreground service tutorial. And over a job this has the benefit that it's guaranteed to start immediately, and it also doesn't get interrupted, whereas a job can get deferred when the device is in low memory situations, or when the device falls into those, which happens when the screen has been off for a while. So only if your service really has this high priority and can't get deferred, you should use a foreground service. Otherwise, please use a job intent service instead. Okay, so we start with a new Android Studio project. And the same as in the foreground service tutorial, we have to create a notification channel first. Because on Android Oreo Entire, we can't show a notification without a notification channel. So we right click on our package and create a new Java class, which we call app and it extends application. And then we click OK. And I'm just gonna copy paste the content of this class because I explained all of this in the foreground service tutorial. So if you want, you can pause the video and type it out or alternatively, you can find a link to the code of this example in the description box below. And next, let's take care of our layout. So we go into our activity main.xml file. Here we remove this text view and then we change the constraint layout into a linear layout which we give the orientation vertical, a padding of 16 dp and a gravity of center. And in here we will put an edit text and a button. The button will start a service and over the edit text we can send some data to the service. This is pretty similar to what we did in the foreground service tutorial. So we write opening angle bracket edit text match parent width, wrap content height, we give it a hint, which will say input, and an ID, so we can find it later on Java code, Android colon ID at plus ID slash, we call it edit text input. And below we put a button, opening angle bracket button, match parent width, wrap content height, but of course you can build this layout any way you want. It will have a text that says start service, and an onclick attribute, which we'll call the start service method, which we will create in our main activity later. We press Ctrl Alt L to rearrange everything. And we don't need a stop service button here because as I already explained, the service will stop itself when all its work is finished. Okay, that's already it for the layout. Now we create our service. So again, we right click on our package and create a new Java class. Let's call it example intent service and it has to extend surprise intent service. We don't change anything else and click OK. And we immediately get the warning because we have to overwrite on handle intent. So we click on this line 
Then we click on the little red light bulb and on implement methods. We keep on handle intent selected and click OK. And here's a little bug because it tries to import the annotation from the Android X package, but I'm still using the old support libraries. So instead I delete this and write add nullable. But in the future you will use Android X dependencies by default, so this should not be necessary. But we still have a warning because we also have to provide a constructor, so again we click on this line, on the light bulb, create constructor matching super. We can delete this comment here. And we have to pass a string name to the superclass constructor. This is just a simple tag for debugging purposes. So we can delete this as an argument and pass it directly. And it will just have the same name as our class. Example intensivus. Again, this is just for debugging purposes. We will also create a constant. We type prsf, which is a live template for private static final. And we want to create a string constant, which we call tag in capital letters. And it will contain the same example intent service as a string. This is just a tag that we will use for our log messages later. And if you remember from the foreground service tutorial, there we had to implement a method called onBind, even though we didn't use it. And here the intent service superclass takes care of this. So we don't have to implement this method ourselves, because we don't use it anyways, since it's only for bound services, which is a whole different topic. Also, we don't overwrite on start command here. Instead, we overwrite on handle intent, where we get past the intent. And this is where we do our work, because this will be executed on the background thread. And the same as in on start command, we can use this intent to send data to the service and use it to process our background work. Each incoming intent is executed sequentially, one after another, on one single thread. If you need multiple threads at the same time in your service, then you have to extend the service class directly, because the intent service can't do that. However, in most cases a single thread should be sufficient, and intent service is way easier to use than handling this threading yourself. And we will start by showing a simple log message. As soon as this method gets executed, so we write log dear. It automatically uses our tag here, and this will just say on handle intent. Then we will get the data from our intent that we will later send over from our main activity. This will be the input in our edit text. So we write string input equals intent.get string extra. And we have to give it a key for which we will simply write input extra. And the same as in the foreground service tutorial, we won't do real work in here. Instead, we will just freeze the thread to simulate work. So we create a for loop with the 4i live template. Let's say we run it 10 times. We will show a log message in each round here as well. And it will display our input, then a minus like this as a string, and i for the number for each round. And then we simply freeze the thread with system clock dot sleep for 1000 milliseconds or one second. So this on handle intent will run for 10 seconds. And then it will handle the next intent, or if it was the last one, it will stop itself and call on destroy. And this method doesn't have a return value. But if you remember, in a normal service, we had to return something from on start command, which defined what happens when the system kills the service due to low memory. Here we handle this a bit differently. Instead, we have to call a method from the constructor, which is called set intent redelivery. And here we have to pass a boolean, true or false. False is the equivalent of start non-sticky in a normal service, which means that when the system kills the service, it won't be created again. True is the equivalent of start redeliver intent, which means that the service will be started again, and the last intent will be delivered to on handle intent. So if you want to make sure that the service gets started again, you have to pass set intent redelivery true. Okay, and the same as in a normal service, we can overwrite on create and on destroy. In on create, we will show a log message as well to see when this method is called. And this time we will also create our notification here. In the foreground service tutorial, we created our notification in on start command because we changed the message of the notification from the input that we sent over. But this time our notification will always show the same text. So we can create it one time in on create. And since we only want to show this foreground notification on Oreo Entire, we first check if build.version.sdkint is greater or equal to build.versioncodes 
o. Then we want to display our notification. The same as in the foreground service tutorial. Notification, notification equals new notification dot builder. We pass this for the context, since service is a context as well. And the notification channel ID, which is the channel ID constant. We press alt enter to import this. This constant is in our app class and we don't put a semicolon here yet because now we want to continue building our notification. Dot set content title, which will simply say example intent service. Dot set content text, which will say running for example, doesn't really matter. We have to set a small icon for which I have prepared this r.drawable.ic android. And lastly, we call dot build to create this notification. And then to start the foreground service, we call start foreground, pass an ID which has to be higher than zero, and a notification. This will turn the service into a foreground service, but just on Oreo onwards. Okay, and we are almost done. As you can see, setting up an intent service is not very complicated. But one more thing we can do is, we can activate a wake lock as soon as our service starts. A wake lock will keep the CPU of the phone running when the screen is turned off, which makes sense if you know that your service could keep running when the user already locks the phone. And we do this in onCreate as well. Let's put it here. And to acquire a wake lock, we write power manager, colored power manager equals, then we have to cast it to power manager, and call get system service where we pass the power service constant. For our wake lock, we create a member variable up here. Private, we type in wake lock, which looks like this, and we call it wake lock. Back into our onCreate method, here we assign this wake lock to a power manager dot new wake lock. Then we pass power manager dot partial wake lock, which is a constant. And partial wake lock means that the screen can still turn off. We just want to keep the CPU running, comma, and then we have to pass a tag, which is just for debugging purposes. We have to pass a string for this. And when we write something like this, we actually get a warning because this tag should follow a certain naming convention, which should contain a colon. So we can write something like this. Example app colon wake lock. Now the warning disappears. And then we simply call wake lock dot acquire, and this will now keep the CPU on. Here we get a warning because in most cases you should use a different acquire method where you have to pass a number. And this number defines a timeout for the wake lock in milliseconds. So this would be 10 minutes. And the timeout is there to make sure that you don't accidentally keep this wake lock after you are done because the wake lock drains the battery of the phone. Here we will leave it out because we will release it later and there won't be anything that can go wrong. But in a real app you should really provide such a timeout. And how large this number is depends on how long your work is expected to run. So if you know it won't take longer than 10 minutes, pass 600,000 milliseconds here. When we acquired our wake lock we will show another lock message, which will say wake lock acquired. Okay, perfect. And now important, after acquiring this wake lock, we also have to release it. We do this in onDestroy. First we will show another lock message, onDestroy. Then we want to release our wake lock, wake lock dot release, And another lock message, which will say wake lock released. And that's it for our intent service. Again, you can find the link to the code of this example in the description box below. If this confused you, take a look at it again. And now we simply take care of our main activity where we will start a service. So over into our main activity Java file. This will be very quick and simple. We create a member variable for our edit text. Let's call it edit text input. We assign it as usual in onCreate. We find view by idea. And then we overwrite our start service method. Public because we call it from XML. Void. We called it start service and we have to pass a view v because we call it from XML. Here we want to get the input from our edit text as a string. Edit text input, get text to string. And then we want to start our service and send the string over. So we create an intent. Let's call it 
service intent equals new intent. This for the context and the name of the class we want to start, which of course is our example intent service dot class. Then we put our input string into our service intent with dot put extra. We have to give it the same name as we did over in our service class, which was input extra. And the value is our input string. And then we simply start our service. Like in the foreground service tutorial, I'm going to use context combat dot start foreground service, which will automatically use start foreground service on Oreo onwards and start service on lower API levels. And again, if you want to know what the difference between these two is, you have to watch the foreground service tutorial. Here we pass context and our service intent. And that's it. And now we only have to make some entries into our manifest file and then we are done. So we go into our Android manifest.xml file. We have to add two permissions at the top. Open the angle bracket uses permission. The first one is for the wake lock. And the second one is a new permission that we need in Android Pi and onwards for the foreground service. In previous versions this wasn't necessary. But if we try to start a foreground service on Pi without this permission, we will get an exception. So make sure to add this. Then we go into our application tag and define Android colon name where we pass our dot app to specify that we want to use our own app class as the wrapper around this application. And lastly, we have to register our service itself. Below the activity closing tag, open the angle bracket service. And here we already get the suggestion, example intent service, slash closing angle bracket. And we are done. So let's test it. Okay, so I have started the app on API level 28. Now I'm gonna start the service three times. As soon as I click start service, we should see a notification. And I've also opened Lockhead, where we should see some output. So I'm gonna start it. One, two, three. We can see on create, rec lock acquired, on handle intent. Now it's running, appears our persistent notification, which we can't swipe off. Now we have the second on handle intent. And the third one. And as you can see, only after the last intent on destroy was called and the wake lock was released. So the three intents I sent were executed sequentially one after another. A, A, B, A, B, Z. And now that it's finished, our notification automatically disappeared because the service automatically stopped itself. We don't have to take care of this, like we had to do it in a normal service. And all of this was executed on a background thread, so we could still use our app while the service is doing its work. In a real app, this is whatever task you want to execute in the background. On API levels lower than 26, we would not have a notification because there we started as a normal background service. But of course, you can start your service as a foreground service on these lower API levels as well. For this, you simply have to remove this if check and just cast start foreground in any case. And the benefits of a foreground service over a normal background service are that it's less likely to be killed in low memory situations and it's also not affected by those. The phone farts into DOS mode when it has been laying around for a while, with the screen turned off. And when this happens, all wake logs that we acquire are actually ignored. So this doesn't work anymore in DOS mode. However, this is not the case for apps that have a foreground service running. With a foreground service, we keep our wake log and the CPU running. So which kind of service you want to use depends on your use case. But now you know how to use intent service in Android. And make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss the job intent service video. Take care.